we have language settings so the default language it's always good to leave on the auto detect because the um, the browser and the operating system will send information you know about what language they're using and that will help ensure that, that uh, you're not um, you know if you're if you're set up in English and you travel to Spain on holiday you probably still want the language to be English so that can be detected from your set the settings on your computer and your browser um, the default language whether we want a language menu displayed which would only be sensible if we are having more than one language but we may decide to have um, you know English and Spanish and German in terms of the languages available on our site as an administrator you definitely want to have almost certainly the caching or caching of these languages and language strings that will speed up your server and the delivery of these pages quite significantly particularly on multilingual sites probably not so important on a on a single language site we can also customize the languages and this is one of the ways that administrators can actually um, sort of customize their Moodle installation their Moodle site because we can change any of the language strings that are used in a particular language pack so I've got English obviously available here um, it Moodle will then load the language pack and I can then so maybe I could go and find an enrollment page that I want to edit so I can then choose that particular file show the strings in there and then we can see all the language strings that are being used if you needed to change the particular wording in your language pack then this is where you would do it you would simply you know some of these will actually be uh, quite long so you you may for whatever reason think that this needs to be a little bit explained a little bit better so you can paste that in and then um, you know change this particular word to, so it makes more sense to everyone so editing the language packs very straightforward um, can be a little bit awkward finding what you actually want so you could for example be saying oh let, let's improve the help in Moodle or let's make let's edit the help files so they're a little bit more relevant to our particular learners so you'd be able to say let's let's look through help files only so quite a powerful feature uh, many administrators don't know about this but um, very useful indeed we also have some security options we have an IP blocker so if you know that your site is getting traffic that you would not would prefer not to have then you could actually add uh, an IP address in here whatever that is um, very difficult these days of course with um, dynamic IP addresses and VPNs and all those sorts of things but it could be useful if you've got um, a situation where you know you have IP addresses you want to block and you can actually put those in there um, and at the same time obviously allowed IP addresses if you're gonna pursue that kind of uh, approach to things site policies page this is some of the uh, important stuff that, that administrators and, and people that set up Moodle sites themselves often miss out because there are quite a few important settings in here we can force users to log in before they see anything at all even though they're a user on the site we can open the site up to Google search and uh, if you're running a public site that might be a, you know and you're selling commercial courses to the public that could be really useful if you're a school or a, a closed organization that doesn't want Google searching around all your uh, files particularly the front page and so on and guest guest courses then make sure that's switched to off um, some controls as well around the maximum size of file that people can upload so although this site has a limit of 32 megabytes at the moment you may want to bring that down a little bit or you may want to set um, the defaulting courses separately to be uh, you know a little bit lower site limit so site upload limit will always default to whatever the site uh, whatever the server limits are actually set out which is usually in PHP we can also set up a uh, or the we can also limit 
the user's private area. Um, you perhaps don't want users uploading gigabytes of information to your server so they can share it with each other. So this is a mechanism where we can we can just pull that down, that, that limit down a bit. Some some users say that 30 minutes is is not long enough to edit posts. So when you when you send when you create a post and you post it, sometimes you look at that and think, or, or later on you think, oh, I wish I'd reworded that. I wish I'd worded that differently. So this is just the the time that's allowed. So 30 minutes is the standard, but that can be raised up to up to an hour. If you have a policy that students have to sign up to, then you can link here to that policy the sort of terms and conditions of your site that, that you may want people to uh, acknowledge. Lots of other things in here as well, some control around the cron job and how that can be triggered. Um, usually on a production site you might disable the, the manual option and make sure you've got passwords on it. Um, some, some controls around account lockouts, so if someone tries to you know uh, uh, enter their password five times are we going to lock them out for 30 minutes um, are we you know sometimes that that helps in terms of security but it can make it more awkward for users that perhaps you know haven't visited the site for a while got their password wrong and now they're locked out you need to think about how these things uh, affect people in the in the real world you know security is great but also usability is important and that brings us nicely on to the password policy. You almost certainly want a password policy these days on your site. Um, you know, Moodle isn't a banking system. It's not. It's not. You know, critical in, at that level. But clearly, we do want to protect users, and we want to help users protect themselves. So, a password policy does mean that we're able to specify. Well, look, you know, you need a minimum of of four characters or eight characters. You need to have at least one number in there, one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, and at least one, uh, you know, a star or a hash or an and sign or whatever. Um, that's possibly the one that that causes most problem for people. So you may decide that um, you don't care about that special character. You may be controlling passwords in a completely different way and doing that yourself. So um, as we might expect as well, you know, we can actually put a, a rotation on that as well so that you know we're asking users to update their password from time to time so lots of control around here about passwords and um, confirmations and and uh, some of those factors is important to look through these think about how your users are you know think about the different types of users how they're going to actually cope with a extreme password policy or, or lockouts and so on um, lots of options need to be carefully thought through really so then um, a couple of other things around here we have HTTP security which is basically where we uh, you know these days we would probably want to see most public facing sites using secure protocols so uh, but just an important note here that if your server is not set up with uh, HTTPS with a, with a valid certificate then you can actually lock yourself out of this site I've done that once many years ago um, and it was really awkward to hack around that and get back into the site so um, don't switch that on unless you know you're actually running a, a, a secure site um, there's some of the little things in here about whether you actually enable frame embedding so some people with a background in HTML might know how to insert frames within content within their courses but uh, there, there are some security issues around that as well notifications these notifications are the notifications of uh, login failures so if you'd liked uh, a little prompt when you log in about who has recently tried to get in six times incorrectly then this page can give you that level of um of information and it might be that you want to actually forward you know select your help desk for that rather than your administrator so that the help desk can actually then contact those people front page settings you've probably already seen this before but this is where we have our, our the title of our page and the short title which is used in the in the navigation the description of the site and then some some controls around how that front page is working so you may want uh, a list of categories to begin with 
and then a search box and then uh, some announcements but after people are logged in you may actually want that quite different so you can actually say okay once you've logged in you see a list of courses and you also see the announcements in fact maybe we'd have the announcements first and then the list of courses so if I'm not logged in maybe I shouldn't be able to see any announcements yet so it's a case of setting this up as you as you think is most logical and then you do have some control around things like the number of courses shown in in one screen the the, the sort of maximum depth of categories obviously some sites have lots of subcategories in terms of the organization now if you do want a little bit of text or a little bit of um, area without going to the theme to add some content then just add a topic section which adds an area just above there and enables you to put in other things like um, images or links and so on and so forth. And then finally, we have the mobile app settings. Uh, fairly straightforward these days. Do we want to enable the, the, Mo the Moodle mobile app to connect to this site? How are we going to authenticate? Usually, we would authenticate via the app. Um, if you are using single sign-on and and uh, other methods then you may need to investigate some of this but via the app is usually going to do it for us and then the appearance it is possible to add a CSS file in here so it might be theme theme extras would be obviously a CSS file it is important that um, this goes in the correct place and it's it's going to be under something like theme mobile whatever it does need to be in the correct place uh, on your site so that's something that only an administrator on the server could do is actually upload that CSS file into the correct location and that and obviously a, a CSS file is going to enable you to change the colors and the fonts and the appearance of the Moodle mobile app so that's an overview of the site administration. Lots of things in there, lots of things to think about. Some of those need input from the academic side. Some of them as an administrator you need to look at in, in quite a bit of depth. And some of them can probably just remain switched off if you're, if you're just starting with your Moodle site and then read up and, and think about how to implement these one at a time as you, as you enable them. Mm -hmm.